Hello, hello. Welcome to today's special live English lesson here on the Speak English with Vanessa YouTube channel. I'm Vanessa. I'm Dan. And this is my husband, Dan. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit special. Usually we talk about specific vocabulary, specific grammar points, but today we're going to be having a natural conversation with some of our top relationships, specifically romantic relationship tips. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about love today. Yeah, I feel like this is a really great chance for you because we're going to be just having a conversation together. But we're, as we say new vocabulary, we're going to try to explain it as best as we can. And this is something sure. that doesn't happen when you're having a conversation with someone in your office or maybe a friend from another country. You're just having a conversation, but there's not a chance to stop and talk about the words that you're using. So hopefully today during our conversation, as new vocabulary comes up, as new vocabulary arises, that's a great phrasal verb, it comes up, we're going to explain it as best as we can. Make mm -hmm. sure to take some notes, make sure to review this if you need to for the vocabulary and also for any romantic relationship tips that yeah. we have to offer. We're going to give some tips today, uh -huh. although these are just a very personal tips, right? Yeah. Every relationship is unique, right? Mm -hmm. I would say we have a very unique relationship. <laughs> We're both kind of unusual people. <laughs> so let's start with a couple pieces of factual information. How long have we, this is a kind of test. <laughs> how long? Oh, it's a test for me. How long have we been married? We've been married eight years. Oh, he passed the test. Woo! Uh, this year in August, it will be nine years. Um, so we're, we've been married like eight and a half years or yeah. so, which is a long time for the average American of mm -hmm. our age, mm -hmm. because we're only 30, one, 31, oh, we're 31. <laughs> so we've been married a little while. Yes. And when did we meet each other? Uh, we met each other the very first day of college mm -hmm. and I was, which is university in other countries. Yes. Yeah, so I was 17 years old. Um, but I was almost 18. The next week was my birthday. So I was pretty much 18 years old and you were 18 too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So we've known each other for quite a long time from 18 to 31. What is that? 13 years, mm. <laughs> a long time. And uh, a lot has happened during that time. I think knowing someone, being in a relationship with someone for 13 years is normal for maybe our parents' generation, mm -hmm. but for our generation, it's something that's a little bit surprising. When people meet us, they're surprised that we are 31 and yeah. we've been married for eight years. <laughs> yeah, and that we've only dated each other for a really long time. Yes. That's not very usual, I don't think. Yeah, and that we still like each other. I think that <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of- Do um, we? Mm, you'll find out today. <laughs> we do. So there's a lot of things that we do in our relationship or principles that we have that have really helped us to maintain a healthy, strong relationship. And those are the two words that I want to focus on today mm. is having a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. not just how to find a boyfriend. I can't give you advice on that, <laughs> but <laughs> or find a girlfriend, but having a healthy relationship and having a strong relationship, mm. it means that you feel confident in your relationship, you feel confident in yourself yes. when you're part of that relationship. And it means it will last a long time. Mm. And if you want to have children, it will mm. be a good relationship to have children. Because really, if you're going to get married, it's probably mostly to have children, mm. in my personal opinion. <laughs> so today, before we get started, I'd like to give a couple disclaimers. <laughs> uh, first of all, we have a unique situation that we met each other when we were young. All of these are personal tips, but uh, that's all we can do is share from our personal lives. We have not been married for 50 years. I know there are plenty of people who have been together much longer than us. Mm -hmm. So take it with a grain of salt. Yes, oh. but apparently it's working. It's working so far. I'm curious, <laughs> can we talk about that first expression? Because this is key for all of our tips today. Which one? Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. What does that mean? So this is an expression that just means um, don't take everything we say word for word and believe everything. <laughs> yeah. It's um, just... We think you should believe it, but you yeah. know, it, it's basically just remember that it's our opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just our opinion. It's just something that's worked for us. So you can use this expression 
if it's, it's great if you're giving advice, be, if you want to be humble, mm -hmm. because you're not saying, I don't want to say my relationship advice is the best advice. No, no, no. I don't want to say that because it's just my personal experience. Mm -hmm. So if you give someone advice, maybe uh, you're, <coughs> you know, some things about cars and your friend asks you, uh, can you look at the tires of my car? I think something's wrong. You mm -hmm. could give some advice, but then you might say, well, take it with a grain of salt. Right. I'm an amateur. <laughs> you should just go to a mechanic. <laughs> yes. So uh, just please take our advice with a grain of salt. This lovely idiom. And let's start with our yeah. first tip today. Should we start with the first one? <laughs> yeah, Dan gave sure. a couple tips. I, I gave have... a couple tips. Yeah, and my first tip is more for the beginning of your mm. relationship. So it's not even really um, during your relationship at all. This is the pre-game we might say. Okay. <laughs> and that is to make sure you're a good fit at the beginning. So mm. we can talk about the expression good fit. Mm. So it's kind of like clothes, yes. right? This shirt is a good fit for Dan. It's not too big. It's not too small. It fits his body. It's a good fit. So, yes. But you can use that for people and relationships mm -hmm. too, right? So I would say Vanessa and I are a good fit. You can kind of imagine maybe a puzzle piece that your personalities fit together. Mm -hmm. So if you meet someone and you think, oh, this person is a wonderful match Good for fit. my personality. Not <laughs> yeah, not your feet. Fit. A fit, F-I-T. Mm -hmm. You could say, Oh, I'm so excited because we've already been on three dates and we're such a good fit mm. for each other. Yes. This is great. You so complement each other. Connected to that, I would say, don't rush. Mm. So don't rush into a relationship. <laughs> so for example, for Vanessa and I, we knew each other for six months before we even dated. Mm. And after dating, we didn't live together for four years. <laughs> Yes, and I've of course this is a little bit unusual. And we were young we because were we were young. so young. <laughs> but my point is, is that mm. you don't want to rush into a relationship. So mm -hmm. maybe this happens to a guy a lot. You mm -hmm. see a girl mm -hmm. and she's so beautiful, and you just you can't even like contain yourself. You just want to go after her and you know talk to her. And maybe you're not a really good fit. You're not a good fit personality wise. Mm. You can't hold a conversation. You don't like to go and do things together. Mm. Well, your relationship is going to be a lot more fun and a lot more enjoyable mm. if you know at the very beginning, before you live together, <laughs> if you get along, if you're a good fit. Sure. The word that Dan used, one of you asked in the chat box is F-I-T, fit. Mm. We are a good fit for each other. And then Dan also said, don't rush, R-U-S-H, R-U-S-H, rush. Don't rush. Yes. I think this yes. also shows confidence in yourself because if you rush, maybe you make some fast decisions really quickly. Maybe it shows, oh, I need to do this or else he won't like me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay. Make yourself comfortable. Make yes. yourself comfortable in your relationship. And, uh, That's important. There's another expression we can use for this. Well, sometimes this is used in medicine, but oh, it's yeah? a... An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Oh, this is a lovely, this is a proverb, actually. It's a proverb, I yes. think Benjamin Franklin might have said this. So here- I bet some Chinese person said it. Maybe so. <laughs> Everything originated in China, right? Yeah. So we could say an ounce of prevention. So this is a small quantity. Yeah, a little bit of prevention, mm. which means something you do before a problem. Mm -hmm. Helps a lot in the future. So if you're careful a little bit at the beginning, it will help so much. We yeah. could say it will pay off. So Dan's advice here is at the beginning to be careful, choose the right person. I once, yeah. uh, I actually watched a TED talk recently because I was thinking about this topic and I had a lot of doubts because we are not perfect. <laughs> so I thought, can we give any tips or advice? We are just humans. How can we share information about this? So I did some a little bit of research and I, I found something quite interesting. One of the marriage experts who I was listening to, she said, usually couples seek help in two situations. They seek help with marital counseling. This is after you're married, you're having problems and you talk to a therapist. Mm -hmm. In that way, 
it's too late. You're already married. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you can get divorced, but that's a big deal. Yes. And the second situation is premarital counseling. If you get married in an English speaking country, or at least in the U S this is so common mm. premarital counseling. Usually you need to have some kind of therapy with maybe a pastor or with someone before you get married. But this, the lady that I was watching, she said, it's already almost too late because you already chose the person who you're going to marry. Mm. So if you have some kind of prevention in the past, if you've already thought about who is a good fit for me, are yeah. we a good fit? You've really had some good insight into your relationship. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, premarital counseling is helpful, but it's not going to change your life because you're already yeah. a good fit. The most important thing is having a vision and principles for yourself and you look at your partner mm -hmm. or your potential partner and say, does this match? Will this be a good fit? Yes. So um, I think this is a good time to say that, you know, for us, we are still a very normal couple in many ways. We still have difficulties. We still argue about things. We're not perfect. No, we are not are perfect. We? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I think that this is something that for the current age, when you can see things on the internet, when you can see things on social media, it's kind of like, at least for women, it's kind of like watching a romantic comedy movie. You might see this perfect image of this wonderful couple in the movie, but that's not reality. So when you see struggle in your own relationship, you feel like it's the end. It's so terrible, <laughs> but really it's just real life. So it's, I think it's really important to not compare your relationship with something that's not realistic, <laughs> like a movie or just some kind of social media images. So that's yes. kind of another disclaimer. But you can compare with <laughs> us because we're real. <laughs> we're pretty this real. This is real but advice. I think what they see of our relationship is not every day. No. So that's we'll what get, I mean. We'll get into the other things. Yes. Let's move on. Yes, let's move on to uh, my tip. So Dan's tips were kind of serious. My tips are kind of light. <laughs> light. As you can tell, Vanessa's very happy. Well, I wanted to share some things that have personally really helped me in our relationship um, beyond the general principles. And this is to have fun together. Mm. Uh, I think that this can apply before you are married, but also during your marriage. I know that we have some friends who have been together for a long time and then even though they both like each other, they feel like, eh, there's nothing special anymore. Maybe we shouldn't be together. Mm -hmm. And of course, everyone has their own situation. But for us, it's been really helpful to have some common activities that we really like to do together. Mm. And there's actually a bunch of studies that show having a relationship, people who are 100 years old or pretty old, <laughs> and they've been in a relationship for a while, something that has helped them is to have fun together mm. because you're not always going to be a honeymoon couple who just met each other. You're going to be just normal people. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what are some and things? This doesn't have to be everything. Oh yeah. You don't have to enjoy everything together. <laughs> right. I have a hobby. I like to watch ice hockey. Mm -hmm. She will not watch a hockey game with me at all. That's my thing. It's I okay. occasionally ask you about it or occasionally I have enough knowledge now from living with you, <laughs> but it's not, we don't do everything together. No, but it's just some things. Mm. It's very good if you like to do some things together. It yeah. will make your relationship more enjoyable overall. So, so for example, we like to go on hikes. Mm. Yeah. So we'll walk up, we'll hike up a mountain together and we'll mm -hmm. have a conversation and we'll be doing something together. Yeah. And then and it's, it's really... something that later you can reflect on. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember when we went on that hike, you have more in common and you can talk about other things. Yeah. Or traveling too. Mm -hmm. Many of you who are into English yeah. probably also like to travel. So um, I remember very fondly going to Europe mm -hmm. with my wife because Europe is very enjoyable and there's a lot of beautiful buildings mm -hmm. and lots of places to go and see. So yeah, it's a fun thing that you can do together. Yeah, I think that it could be something simple like hiking, even enjoying cooking meals together. We like to play games. So yes. we like to play board games. We play board games. We like to play disc golf, which is like throwing a Frisbee together. 
We like to run around in the park together. We like these fun things. And um, something that the, the marriage counselor who I was watching that video about, something that she mentioned is that sometimes after you've been with someone for a long time, your relationship tends to get more serious, not just serious as in you're going to stay together, but serious as in your demeanor. Demeanor means your face, your attitude. Your attitude becomes really serious mm. because you're talking about daily life, your job, are you doing the dishes, who's cooking dinner, where's our baby, just factual things, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> not really fun things. So she said it's really important to add fun <laughs> into your life instead of just those kind of okay how much money Busy do we have details. can we do this yeah those kind of serious things it's good to insert some fun into your life if you have time <laughs> yeah it could even be something small like listening to music together sure something that yeah. you can enjoy as a couple and somebody asked what's a board game or um. <laughs> how to spell board game b-o-a-r-d Yes. Board game. It's a tabletop game, a game you play on the table. Yes. Like cards or uh, Monopoly. That's a perfect example. Yeah. We are we don't really play Monopoly, but there are lots of great board games. Maybe we should make a video of a board game sometime. Yeah, it definitely. Could be a fun time. Um, all right. Let's go on to the next tip mm. that you have. What's your next tip? So my next tip, mine are Serious all negative. <laughs> it is don't make excuses oh. or place blame. Now, sometimes you're going to do these things. So, um, can you explain the word blame? Yeah. Because that's kind of a complex word. So, if you place blame, which mm. is B L A M E, mm -hmm. that means you are saying to somebody else, it's your fault. You're pointing your finger. You did this. <laughs> it's your problem. You, you, you. <laughs> and not never yourself. Mm. And don't make excuses would be if you do something wrong, if you say mm. something bad or you make a mistake, if you make an excuse, you're always saying mm. something like, well, I, I was tired mm. or, well, uh, I was really busy and I didn't have time to do this or that, you know, mm. this is making excuses. It's coming up with reasons why you were bad. Mm. or you didn't do things as good as you could. Yeah. So if you do these things a lot, if you mm. place blame or you make excuses very frequently, mm. then your relationship will get uh, Just, not very enjoyable. Yeah, we can even use the word crumble. Ooh, a crumble. <laughs> crumble, we can imagine uh, a cookie. Mm -hmm. When you break a cookie, it crumbles, it breaks into little pieces. So we can use this figuratively to say, oh, our relationship is crumbling. Yes, place blame, that's right. Somebody wrote place blame. Yes, and don't a lot place of times blame. You can get into blame games. Oh, this is a good idiom. Don't right. play the blame game. <laughs> so a lot of times if you blame somebody, mm. if you say, this is your fault, why mm. did you do this? Maybe they'll say, no, it's your fault. And they'll just go back and forth and back and forth. This you. is the blame game. It's the not good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that in this situation, uh, this is an important time to have insight mm. into yourself and insight into the other, your partner. The word insight, we can imagine, in, inside, and sight. You're seeing into yourself. So in this situation, let's take a concrete example. Uh, this is something that happens in our house. I'm sure it happens in your house too. The dishes. <laughs> uh, we actually just got a dishwasher, so it has been amazing. But if we had some dishes in the sink, mm -hmm. maybe Dan thought that I was going to do them. I thought that Dan was going to do them. And then I say, oh, why didn't you do the dishes? Well, I'm blaming him. <laughs> but also, I don't have insight into why he didn't do them. Mm -hmm. So maybe I say, why didn't you do them? And he says, I'm, I'm too tired. I don't want to do them. I thought you were going to do them. Well, here, I didn't realize, oh, he's tired. And he didn't realize that I thought he was going to do it. We don't have this spoken communication connection about who should do it. So this, I feel like this kind of blame can often be resolved with a couple deep breaths. <laughs> Okay, it's just the dishes. This is small things. Yes. It's choosing your battles. This yes. is a common expression that we use in relationships, often with the word pick. Pick your battles 
or choose your battles. Mm. This word B A T T L E S. What does it mean to say pick your battles? <laughs> pick your battles means don't argue about everything. Mm. If you're going to get angry or frustrated, then choose uh, something important, not mm. lots of little problems. Yeah, yeah. We often call this nagging, N-A-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G, and we nagging. can we can imagine the stereotypical, usually it's a woman, a stereotypical woman <laughs> in a movie. The wife is saying, hey, pick up your clothes. Why didn't you do that? Oh, why are you still sleeping? Get out of bed, blah, blah, blah. This is nagging. Nobody likes nagging. No <laughs> one wants to nag and no one wants to be nagged. Yeah, and I think... Uh, Maybe an extra bit of advice. Mm. You said take a deep breath. This is a good idea. Take a deep breath. If you're feeling a little <laughs> angry at your partner, before you say something, just breathe. Because, I mean, I know we look very happy all the time, but we get angry with yeah. each other, too. I it's promise true. you, it happens. Yep. And I've had to learn, especially me, sometimes I get a little bit... Um, I have a, a temper. I can get angry. You can get upset sometimes. I can get angry sometimes. I think everybody can get upset sometimes. So <laughs> I've had to learn to stop and mm. take a little breath before I say something. Because when mm. you're angry, you might say something really mean. And if you take, if you say something really bad, <laughs> your partner is going to remember that. Yes. <laughs> so you don't want to, you don't want to let a lot of those bad words build mm. up. Yeah, over time. I think we're going to talk about this more with Dan's third tip about how to not let things build up. Build up means your anger is growing inside of you and you explode. In Dan's third tip, we're going to talk more about that. But uh, before we go on to my tip, I feel like not blaming, picking your battles, all of this deals with the category of emotional regulation. <laughs> this is kind of a fancy word. Mm. Uh, I read this in one of the articles that I was reading about this topic, uh, relationship advice, and I feel like it covers so many great things. Regulating yourself, mm -hmm. am I just lashing out? Lashing out is like a whip with your words. Lashing out, or am I being rational? Mm -hmm. Am I being thoughtful? And also when someone else, if Dan criticizes me, or if Dan says, hey, you said you were going to do the dishes and you didn't do them. Why didn't you do them? I need to have emotional regulation. Mm. Personally, I don't like it when people tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm very stubborn. Maybe you're like this too. So in this situation, I need to feel okay with some uncomfortable feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when someone corrects me, I need to take a deep breath. Okay, I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> and I can't just yell at him immediately. I need some emotional regulation. Somebody said, I breathe every morning to control anger. Good idea. <laughs> Words show. That's a good one. This is Breathe a, every day. Yes. Take some deep breaths. And I think in this situation, making sure that you are not immediately getting upset at the other person and also not getting upset when people yeah, correct meditation you. Meditation or yoga, that would probably help mm. with the situation. Yeah. And it's more difficult for some people than others. Yeah. Certainly. Like I know I have more trouble with emotional regulation than Vanessa, mm. which I think is a little unusual. Maybe the stereotype is mm. that the woman is usually more emotional. Vanessa mm. is a very <laughs> steady person. It's very... It's amazing. We can use a great expression here, even keel. Even keel, yes. This is E-V-E-N-K-E-E-L, even keel. I mm -hmm. think this refers to a boat, like a boat that's flat. It's not going one way or the other. If you are even keeled, it means that you're not swinging from emotion. Oh, I'm really angry. Happy, oh, I'm really happy. Yes. Or like you're instantly angry. You are even killed. Yeah, steady person is another way. To yeah, put so you it. could steady. say, I would like to marry someone who is even keeled, or I need someone who's even keeled so that they will help me as well to mm -hmm. manage myself. Yes. So let's. This really goes with my second tip. <laughs> my second tip is quite specific, and it is something that's helped us a lot, which is yes, even keel. Yes. K-E-E-L. Oh, great. Thank you for writing that in the live comments. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. My second tip is to delegate 
chores Whoa. or specific tasks. A specific one. This is really specific, but I feel like for me, maybe for me as a woman, in my experience, usually this just chores. Chores means doing the dishes, tidying up, cleaning the bathroom, sweeping the floor, household things. This often is just what the wife does. Mm. So if the wife doesn't want to do everything, it's so important to have a real conversation together about all topics, especially if this really bugs you. Bugs you means bothers you. If it's something that's really important to you, don't be afraid to have a conversation about it. So mm. Dan and I have done this. We continually do this to change our roles and to change our specific things that we're doing. But we say, okay, so I feel like I've been doing a lot of laundry and maybe the dishes haven't been done often. So how can we make this more even? Mm. And really this delegation, can you explain the word delegation or to delegate? Delegate just means that you are choosing mm. what the different things people mm. are doing. And a lot of times if somebody is a delegator, like if Vanessa delegates, mm. then she is telling everybody what to do. <laughs> but if we're delegating yeah. together, yeah. we're both choosing what chores we want to do. Yeah. And I would add to this that this definitely depends on your relationship. So mm -hmm. in some relationship, the man works all day and the woman works at home. Mm. In that sense, it makes perfect sense for the woman, the woman to, do, to more. do more chores. Sure. But in a lot of relationships nowadays, both the man and the woman work. Mm. So you've got a now, lot of roles to now do. Now <laughs> you have to delegate because yeah. if the man and the woman are both working, mm. then you need to decide. It's more important today mm. to be on a good connection because you have to choose who is doing what in the house. Yeah. Because it's not really fair if the man and the woman are working for the woman to still do all the chores. Uh -uh, that ain't fair. Yeah. So in this situation, it's really worked well for us to say, okay, Dan always does the laundry. And I, because we have a, a toddler, he's one and a half years old. I feed our baby. I nurse our baby a lot still. <laughs> so this takes up a lot of my time. So I, this is my job. I feed, I nurse our toddler and Dan does the laundry. Mm -hmm. He has to go all the way to the basement he has to wait in the middle of the night for the laundry to be finished. This is a difficult task that I don't want to do. And he can't nurse yes. our baby. So we're here saying we delegate. D-E-L-E-G-A-T-E. -E -E. Not delicate. Yeah, it doesn't have a C. It has a G. Delegate. Yes. Uh, you can also say negotiate. Mm, we need to negotiate our roles. Negotiate is, um, all right, I want to do this, but I don't really want to do this. So you're deciding and you're giving and you're taking. Mm. This is all in a lot of relationships as well. You have to negotiate. Yeah, I think the general principle that we're talking about here is just good communication. Mm -hmm. That do not expect your partner, your husband or your wife to read your mind. This means reading your thoughts. Mm. I've noticed that for me, I think this is maybe true. I'm making a lot of generalizations here. I think it's you general, have to. generally true that um, it's good to be clear and straightforward. Straightforward means especially with very a man. clear with your husband. <laughs> that if I beat around the bush, this means uh, say something indirectly. Sometimes Dan doesn't get it. <laughs> so I need to be clear and say, um, oh, there's, this is beating around the bush. If I said, oh, I don't have any socks, that's beating around the bush. Being clear is, have you done the laundry? I need more socks. Yes. <laughs> this is very clear. So realizing that the other person cannot read your mind. If I said, oh, I don't want anything for my birthday. You don't need to buy me anything, okay? Maybe he's going to believe that. <laughs> but really, in my heart, I really want a present. Just tell him, I would like a present. Please find me something special from your heart. Yes, although <laughs> on the flip side, if you're a guy, it's better if you know these things already. <laughs> but I'm saying as a, <clears throat> as a couple, it's good to be clear and straightforward. I think more for things you want in daily life. Yeah. Not gifts, 
you know, like doing the laundry, it's better to just say, hey, I need the laundry done soon. Yeah, please. sure. Or to just be on top of it. That's more direct. <laughs> yes. So let's go on. We said to delegate some chores, delegate some tasks. Uh, recently, we just booked a special vacation and Dan booked our rental car and I booked the places where we're oh, going to yes. stay. We delegated because yes. I said, I don't want to plan the vacation all of the travel details, mm. where we're going, because I was a little nervous about that. But I said, I'll plan the transportation. Yeah. I'll do the car and the, where we're going and the driving and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I'm planned, cool with that. I planned where we're going to stay and Dan planned the car. And this for me, it split, it divided the work. I didn't need to do everything. Dan didn't need to do everything. But we both did. We negotiated some kind of equal thing with each other, which is something I really appreciate about a relationship. All right, we are going a little bit long here, so yeah. let's go on to the, the last one. The third tip, which is very specific as well. It's something that I think, I don't know many other couples who do this, <laughs> but uh, I think it's something that's really worked well for us. So what is your third, your third tip, our fifth tip together, our final tip for my, a healthy- My final <laughs> tip yes. for a good and strong relationship. Yes is to check in regularly. Mm, mm, check we have in. check in. A wonderful phrasal verb. Yes, <laughs> check in. Mm. So this means that you are planning a day or a date where you are going to talk about important things mm. or you're going to plan a conversation. Yes. So if you check in with each other, maybe you ask, how are you feeling? Mm. How are you feeling about Mm, your week the school our kid is going to oh. or how do you feel about yeah how do you feel about the week how you're, was your week last week you're checking in yes and this is check-in can mean a lot of different things a lot of times if you see check-in it just means that you are going to a hotel mm -hmm. and they're going to write you in to the hotel i'm going to check into the hotel at 10 a.m mm -hmm. <laughs> but here we're talking about emotionally but if you emotionally check mm. in with each other or it, it might not even be emotional. It could be mm. um, the kind of things you're doing in the week. Mm. Maybe a little more pragmatic. So the specific way that this plays out, plays out is another phrasal verb, that this mm -hmm. goes in our relationship, is we have meetings <laughs> uh, once a week, every Sunday, when our baby, our toddler, our child is taking a nap we have an organized meeting. We call it a meeting. It's not really a meeting. It's kind of, it's organized. And I think that sometimes a date, you just, you know, eat together and talk together about anything. But I really appreciate that it's organized because we were talking about before letting your anger build up. This is a terrible thing for you. It's terrible for mm. your relationship. But I know every Sunday we are going to have a meeting. So if there's something big that I want to talk about, I can talk about it mm. on site. Of course, I can talk about it at that moment if I wanted to. Would you say check in is analyze, somebody asked? Oh, we could analyze our week. If we're checking in. Checking in it with could, each other. It could have some analyzation. Analyzation? <laughs> you so could analyze each other you can a little analyze. bit. Or analyze your week. Yeah. It's more just a time to really, um, it's where you say it's okay to talk about mm -hmm. the maybe the problems of the week or how you felt. Yeah. So for example, in our check-in time, mm -hmm. in our meeting, we always rate the week. Yeah, let's, let's talk about how do we start. So on Sunday, our child takes a nap. We usually drink some tea or coffee and we sit down at the dinner table. And what's the first thing that we do? This is just what we created. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first we try to say two things that we appreciate about each other. Something very specific. We try specific. to say something nice about each other. <laughs> because often maybe there's some kind of criticism. Oh, I, I was really upset because you didn't do the laundry for three days. You know, there can be some things that are a little bit difficult that we talk about. So it's always good to start with something positive. So for mm. us, we say, I appreciate that you made an amazing dinner last night. And I also was really thankful that you took our car to the mechanic to get the oil changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, simple, clear, very specific. And for me, it feels- w Women like this a it lot. It feels really good. <laughs> it feels really good because I know that I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I know that Dan doesn't need to say, thank you for 
picking up our baby's toys. Thank you for yes. doing this. He doesn't need to say I thank you for everything. I appreciate <laughs> this. Yeah. yeah, you don't go through everything. Just yeah. choose two specific things. So it makes wow, me feel I good. I really <laughs> appreciated that you watched Theo. Theo's our baby. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you watched Theo for two hours while I went to a movie. Mm -hmm. While I exercise. Wow, Thank that you. was really great of you. Yeah, and it feels good to be appreciated. So this is what we do at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then what happens next? Then we rank our week, mm -hmm. right? So one to five, how was our week? Uh, oh, my <laughs> week was a 3.5. And why? And what happened? Why? <laughs> yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. You go over like what you liked about the week, what you didn't like, how it could be better, mm. right? So if you do this every week, then you're kind of, you're checking in with each other. Yeah. And then you're thinking, well, what could make the next week a little better? Yeah, and you used a great phrasal verb here. You go over the week. Mm -hmm. And go over doesn't mean literally over. Here it means you're just discussing. Mm -hmm. You're going in detail about the week. I rate this past week uh, 3.8 because this happened, but also this happened. And it helps you to kind of review the week. And then if something made you feel negative, it's a good time to say, oh, but I didn't sleep enough. I felt so tired all week. So maybe this week I'm going to try to do something better. And that's kind of the next part is mm -hmm. we talk about the details of next week. Here's our plans. Next week, I'm going to try to go to bed at this time. Yeah. And I have a lot of work to do. So I'm going to try to do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. How can we work together? It's it's, it's like a meeting. I feel like yes. it's like a meeting. It's pretty organized. And but <laughs> again, another one more disclaimer is <laughs> this is very important for us. Yeah. Because we have a very open schedule. Mm, yeah. We don't have traditional jobs, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have a traditional job, if you're an entrepreneur, if you spend a lot of time working together, like mm -hmm. we have to work together. A lot for it's everything. All, we're almost like business partners, mm -hmm. really. So it's important to do this. Some other people, I think you could do this maybe once a month mm -hmm. because maybe the man is working here and the woman's working here and they're yeah. a little more separate. You know, that's okay too. Yeah. You don't have to do everything together. Yeah, something that we often do during this meeting, uh, we've missed a little bit, but for about three, maybe four years, once a month during that meeting, we keep track of our budget. Mm. And I know that money fights yes. are often the biggest problems in relationships. You should talk about money. If you're if you're married, you got to talk about money. So together. something that has been good for us <laughs> is we have an Excel spreadsheet. This is quite detailed into our personal life, but we have an Excel spreadsheet. And at the end of the month, we look at our bank account. Okay, here's a grocery store purchase and we put it in the Excel spreadsheet and we add up, we spent this much money for groceries. We add up, we spent this much money for car gas. And when you can look at the numbers, it helps you together to see the facts. It's not me being upset because we spent too much money, Dan being upset because I bought something. No, yes. we just see the facts. And this would be a situation where you can't blame or yeah. make excuses. Yeah, because there's the facts. So I feel like <laughs> for me, I love to save money. Dan is Dan does not spend very much money, but he doesn't... I spend more money than you. He spends a little bit more than me. We're quite similar that we don't spend a lot of money. But for me, it feels so nice to see our money on a paper and to know, okay, we can, it gives me permission <laughs> to, we can go out to a restaurant, it's fine. Uh, it gives me permission to relax a little bit. Or maybe for you, if you, if your finances are tight, I talked about this in a recent YouTube video about learning English for free, you can know, okay, maybe we need to not go out to a restaurant. If one of you, your husband or your wife, spends a lot of money, this is a good way to be clear and honest in your relationship and look at your finances together. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people don't do this and that when they do this, it gives so much relaxation and it relieves so much stress because usually one person in your relationship feels more stress about money than the other person. Mm. So it's really nice to be on the same page. This is a great expression. You are on the same, like a piece of paper, on the same page. We're on the same page. Yes. 
We it, agree. Yes. That's basically what it means. It just means you both agree. I want to be on the same page with you. Mm. So let's check in with each other once a week. Let's do some fun activity together. Let's go hiking together mm. and try to have fun and relieve our stresses. <laughs> yes. So these are our general tips. These are our <laughs> tips. And I would just say, remember number one. That's mm. the most important. <laughs> Make sure you're a good get fit. <laughs> in the relationship with the right person, because let's say you want to mm. talk about money. Mm. It's going to be very hard to talk about money with somebody mm -mm. who is irresponsible with money. You have to make sure the person mm. you're getting in a relationship with is already good with money. Otherwise, it's going to be Quite even difficult. more challenging. Yes. But that to say, it's not impossible. Yeah. You might be in a relationship with somebody who's not good with money. Mm you can still work something out. Yeah, I, th I think that something for us, if we have, let's imagine hypothetically that I'm really bad with money and Dan is really good with money. If Dan is really concerned about this, it's probably a problem anyway, but if Dan is concerned about it, he can't, maybe I'm um, looking at my phone. He can't say to me all of a sudden, hey, why, why did we have this purchase? What are you doing? I'm not in the right mindset mm -hmm. to discuss this. So I feel like something that's worked for us, when there's a problem that's really important to one of us, saying, hey, when you have a moment, can we talk about something really important? Mm -hmm. Or I saw this purchase here and it's really important to me that we talk about it. Be serious. Mm -hmm. Be, it's important to you. So don't just have, make sure you have emotional regulation don't just explode about it, but say, hey, this is really important. Can we talk about it? And look at each other's eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at each other and say, hey, this is really important to me. Can we please go through our finances? Mm -hmm. Let's go through our bank account and make a list and see how much we're spending. This would really be important to me. Mm -hmm. Try to appeal to their care for you. Dan cares for me. I care for him. So if he says this is so important to me, let's please talk about it. Of course, I want Dan to be not stressed. So when you take the time to talk about something important like that, it means so much more. If he just said, hey, what are you doing? And then I'm doing something else, it's just gonna create an argument because mm -hmm. my mind is not there. Dan's emotional regulation is everywhere. So taking a moment, can we really talk about this? This is so important yeah, Or to can me. we talk about this later? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that, really... that can help too. You don't want to talk, <laughs> you don't want to bring up stuff in the mm. moment all of the sudden. That yeah. really helps. Somebody said they're confused about which number we're on. <laughs> I don't think we've been very organized. Uh, it, Sorry, everybody. Dan wrote three tips. I wrote two tips. So we had one tip, one tip, one tip, one tip, one tip, one tip. So Dan has three. I know I said we have five tips. There's but five total. <laughs> we've, we've, been at, we've been adding a lot of stuff. Yes. So we are talking about. Uh, <laughs> Now the conclusion. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this kind of unusual topic today, giving just our personal relationship advice is for two reasons. Number one, Valentine's Day is coming quite soon. <laughs> so you might be uh, preparing for your uh, relationship, something for your relationship, yeah. maybe thinking about relationships a little bit more. Valentine's Day is coming up in February. And number two is in our monthly English course, the Fearless Fluency Club. We have a special lesson set in February. And this is where I interview a therapist. Ooh. And she's not a relationship therapist. She <laughs> is uh, an eating disorder therapist. Very different. But she is a therapist and she deals with people who are coming to her with problems. And so I kind of wanted to imitate that a little bit. <laughs> so what I'd like to do now is I would like to share my screen with you to show you if you would like to continue to learn with us, if you would mm -hmm. like to continue this idea of deepening your English through real English conversations. Yes, and in a more organized fashion. This is more a casual conversation this is a casual chit -chat. we're having with you today. <laughs> yes. So I would like to share my screen with you to show you. Let's take a look here. You can see this is our Fearless Fluency Club page where you can click the link in the description and join our course. You can find out much more information about each of the lessons here. But what I'd like to do is give you a little sneak preview into the February lesson set. So here you can see 
February 2019. We have each month, there is a special, this is a course guide in general for how to use the course. This is a monthly lesson set guide. We're gonna be talking about therapy with Elaine. Elaine is a professional counselor or therapist. And in this lesson set, we talk about a lot of vocabulary that she used in our conversation. Hey, look, there's blame. Oh, we talked about blame. Wonderful. Mm. Oh, you're already ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then we talk about grammar. Oh, we're going to be talking about really, so, too, these kind of intensifiers at all. I noticed we used at all in our conversation, actually. And then we talk about some specific pronunciation. So let's take a look. Here you can see the vocabulary lesson with Dan and I. There's two parts to this vocabulary lesson. The grammar lesson, where I explain these important expressions for intensifying your conversation. There's an MP3, you can download it. And also the transcript of the full lesson so that you can follow word for word. This is helpful for everyone, but it's especially helpful if you are maybe a high beginner, low intermediate, because it's good to catch every single word. And then we have the pronunciation lesson, so you can learn some specific pronunciation tips. If you have watched any of my pronunciation lessons here on YouTube, this lesson is quite similar. We shadow and repeat and practice individual sounds. And then we have the special conversation with my friend Elaine, who is uh, an eating disorder therapist, and she talks about going to therapy, this process of helping people with something that's really personal really personal and sharing that with a stranger and how she helps people, especially she helps young people in her field. But she goes through this and talks about it in detail. It's quite interesting to see the insight into her, uh, into her job. And then in the course, we have the story. The story is a unique thing here. We have different audio recordings of the story. This is a combination of all the vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, plus some extra vocabulary from the full lesson set. This is about uh, going to therapy. It's kind of a, a fiction story, <laughs> but you can use and see all of the vocabulary in a different context. So I hope that this will help to just add to your knowledge of the vocabulary and grammar and see it in a different context. There are questions so you can practice answering questions. It's kind of a controlled speaking practice and also different verb tenses so that you can practice different verb tenses. All right, I'm gonna bring back our, our video here. So if you would like to join us monthly in the Fearless Fluency Club and practice these conversations together with us, <laughs> you are welcome to join the Fearless Fluency Club now in January or in February. If you join in January, you'll get the January lesson set immediately. And then in the month of February, February 1st, you'll get access to this special lesson set with Elaine. It is $35 per month, but please use the coupon code NEW. If you use the coupon code NEW, N-E-W, you only get it for $5. $5. You have a $30 discount, which is great for the first month. Try the course, you pay $5. If you don't like it, cancel if it's a good fit for you. You mm. can continue in the course and your English will grow day by day. Mm. You're welcome to join us. Many members speak together on Skype and Google Hangouts weekly, daily. They practice speaking together. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to meet friends from around the world. And also you're, yes. not, you're not paying for expensive Skype lessons. Instead, you're speaking with other people who are also learning, who are like you. It's a community. Yeah, so you can feel comfortable speaking with them. And at the end of each month, we have a group Google Hangout with me. So you'll be able to chat with me in this group Google Hangout. It's super fun. We have a good time together and you get a, just a chance to meet each other and also meet me and practice speaking a bit. So thank you so much for joining me. I wanna know in the comments, what is your number one relationship tips. Yeah, share your tips. Yes. Tell us, yes. how can we have a better relationship? Yes, of course, we are always open to expanding and growing and strengthening our relationship, but also for other people. It's interesting to see yeah. what worked for you, maybe what didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give us some things not to do. So I hope that this lesson has been useful to you and we'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel.
I'll see you again the next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.